say she doesn't have a top down approach she she wants to work with the blind and believe me she is one woman who loves to make the best blind jokes in the campus she is none other than jacqueline from ghana let's give her a big round of applause jacqueline following instructions carefully imagine you are in a classroom and you are the only sighted child in the whole school for the blind and all instructions are given to you in braille just like the one on the screen what do you do then knowing very well that you also have equal rights to education just like the blind children who can read this but no one cares why because your teachers are equally blind they cannot read print let me take you on a journey with a story of a young lady posted to one of the rural areas in Ghana in 2001 to teach The first time she arrived in the village she met a young boy 14 years of age blind and begging at the village square. She didn't really pay much attention to the child because she was in hurry to meet her head teacher for the next assignment. Teaching for about 3 weeks she realized most of the kids in her classroom have problems with eyesight. because the right by omitting words reversing the words sometimes or even right across the lines in their exercise books with her experience she decided to investigate why this huge number of children who have this problem in one classroom then she got to know this area was an onkosarcasis endemic area onkosarcasis simply means river blindness that's the common name and it is around river banks and it happens in the rural areas and with this it starts only with a bite from a fly called simulion fly common name black fly when it bites you it injects eggs into your blood streams these eggs hatch into worms in your blood streams climb up to your eye nerves and they bite them up within a few years you are blind so who knows this could be the problem of this 14 year old boy but no one cared he was isolated left without being cared for until one day no one saw him again but no one really bothered to ask where he went with this This young lady decided to help this children to stop dropping out of school and be something in the future. Then she enrolled into the university and studied education for the visually impaired for four years. She came back to that same region and started working as a resource teacher for blind children in the mainstream school for the past four years. That young lady is me. My name is Jacqueline and I'm from Ghana. Good afternoon everybody. If you are blind in Ghana, you have two options to formal education. The first is to go to school for the blind and study using only the braille as a system of instruction. Or you go to the mainstream school where you are taught like alongside the sighted but you are supported by a resource teacher like me but this system has a problem the problem is there are few resource teachers so the resource teacher is not always there to help you and even if the resource teacher comes then 
children are denied of their break periods, as we can see on the screen. Blind children are denied of their break periods because the resource teacher needs to move from one school to another. So where is the inclusion? Or where is the integration we are talking about? With this thought, and me as a resource teacher, with this problem still prevailing, and children getting out of school because of lack of resources, support, and materials, I talked to a lot of friends about it. Of course, they are also resource teachers. And we thought of a way to solve this problem, if it is only by making accessible teaching learning material. Then one day, I met a friend who equally works with blind people around the world. She introduced me to Kantari. And here in Kantari, the challenges, the experiences, made me to put all my thoughts together and decided to have a project alongside with all other colleagues forming an organization we name Blind Sparks International. But the Blind Sparks Bra Ghana project is going to start with a resource library for blind children back home in Ghana. This project will start from the Volta region of Ghana, where I'm coming from, because that is the area that suffers from this river blindness. And we have most of those children in all the schools along those areas because many parents cannot afford to send their children to school for the blind, which we had only two in Ghana, and they are quite far away from my region. In this library, we are going to start first by producing reading materials out of Braille for beginners because we believe that Braille makes blind children literate. And at the same time, it makes them to think logically, structurally, and even when they grow up and start using computers, they structure their documents well. And research also shows that blind children who study Braille or are Braille literate have greater opportunities to job opportunities than those who do not. That is why we are going to take bro as the most fundamental thing to teach our young blind children. And ladies and gentlemen, it will interest you to know that the Swiss Foundation of Bro Without Borders has already donated an embosser, bro printer, for the startup of this project. Additionally, in our library, we are going to produce books using the accessible information systems. This I learned during my internship in Kantari. With this system, it's going to help blind children who are in higher classes. You know, when we all climb higher in education, our books becomes bigger and bro becomes bulky. Some of the translations cannot be converted into bro. But with this system, we can equally have teaching and learning materials produced from engineering books, mathematical books, and science books. Yes, in my country, blind children are not supposed to study maths and science. Why? It is not because they cannot. It is because we cannot provide them with the teaching learning material. So it's a law. They don't study it above the basic level. But with this project, we are going to make it possible for blind children to take challenges of studying courses that were conventionally reserved for the sighted kids. With this project, we want to see blind children taking their own education in their own hands and taking, making choices on their own without being dictated to. We also want to see blind children having the mindset change of dependency to independence. They know they can without the sighted, nor the resource teacher. That is our goal. And with this, this project is of course going to partner with the Special Education Division of 
the Ghana Education Service because they are the body responsible for the inclusive education practice in Ghana. And to make it possible, we need their partnership to be able to get the teaching learning materials, get the right legislations to be able to convert these materials into the accessible format for our children. And also, resource teachers will be trained to become producers of those teaching learning materials. And then they go ahead to train blind children to be able to use those materials efficiently and successfully without the help of the resource teacher. And those things are equally very simple and cost effective and saving time because all this accessible format can be loaded on mobile phones. Most of these kids already use these mobile phones with talks. So why don't we make use of them? It can be loaded on simple MP3 players, then the, the DAISY player, even Braille displays are used. And the advantage of using the Braille display is that as they listen, they learn the spelling of the words at the same time in Braille because it pops up. So with this, blind children can lead a fulfilled, independent adult life. Dropping out of school because of lack of resource materials and support services will be a thing of the past. And we will have our blind children walking shoulder high and choosing the professions they want in the future. Wait a minute. Can you read through the lines what this project is going to do when, once it starts? This project actually is going to make the role of the resource teacher my own profession, redundant in the Break classroom. the barrier. It starts with you. So, break the barrier. It starts with you. Thank you. Clapping into the mic, as you noticed. Uh, uh, excellent presentation, Jacqueline. This Thank is the you. kind of thing I really want to hear. You know, I mean, I, I keep dreaming of a day when teachers will actually become redundant. All kinds of teachers, not just resource teachers. Um, no, but I, I actually want to ask you a couple of things. One is, um, how do you, um, uh, you talked about maths and um, uh, math skills and uh, science. But what about, what is the state of language teaching um, in Ghana? Um, how is it, uh, is it, do you think it's competent? Because obviously we need more than one language to survive in the present system. So do you think that the kind of teaching that's happening in languages is good enough? Yes, that, uh, to me it's good enough because we have skilled resource teachers. And in my project, these resource teachers will rather be trained to become producers of this. So that means it spreads across the country because the resource teachers have locations they work individually. So if we are able to train those resource teachers, they go on to impart to the children. And it's enough. Yeah. So my, uh, my question was a little specific. It was about teaching languages. So, um, for example, English, and so, someone here was commenting on how low standards of education are for the blind, not just really for the blind, actually generally across school, education standards are falling in the, in the south, you know that. And uh, I want to ask, and English particularly is a challenge. So I wanted to ask you if teaching, say, another language, English, which is not local, uh, how is it right now at Ghana, and do you have plans for improving it through, the, through what you just described? Yeah. With Ghana, the national language is English. It starts from the day the children start school. So with the spoken English or the written English, I think we've done enough. But the problem is the lack of material and resources that should accompany blind children because the sighted have the libraries 
to just enter a library, you get a book, you read, but they don't. So why don't we give them that opportunity for them to also decide their own fate? Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, I like the way which you present yourself. Thank you. Uh, that's wonderful, really. And the second thing was, you know, a resource teacher turning into a Kantari. That's really wonderful. Thank uh, you. I, I wish more more resource teachers come into this <laughs> come to this lane, so that you know they're already in the existing system, so that they can do much, and uh, they can change their uh, you know their interpretation about how to teach a blind child. And I understand that you are going to use the existing resources of your uh, the, the education department in Ghana, right? Okay. So, uh, what is your understanding about the level of uh, level of education for the blind child in Ghana at present, or how do you rate it? In Ghana now, the education for the blind is basically most concentrated on the two school for the blinds we have because it was only in 2008 that the government passed the inclusive education law. So most of the poorer communities prefer to send their children to the mainstream school. But the problem is that the regular teachers are not resource enough to take care of them. And the government decided to support with the resource teacher system like me. But I have about 12 schools to move around, so you can imagine, even in a week, I may not be in a school. So what happens to that child? That is where I want to augment the effort of what the government is doing. Yeah. No, that, is, that is already there. No, the resource teacher always will travel. That's why we are calling them as itinerant teacher. Because, you know, it's very hard to find uh, uh, 10 or 15 children, uh, blind children, in one single school. So it is sure that you know you need to travel. The resource teachers need to travel at least three or four schools or five schools in an in and around area. That's true. And uh, what we believe is, you know, what we believe means I personally believe is that you no, know, the child should study mathematics from the mathematics teacher, English from the English teacher, and uh, and the, I mean the languages from the language teacher. It goes like that. But the, the duty of the resource teacher is to build the gap between the normal teacher and the child, the, where, where the child is lacking. Uh, how the communication is progressing, what are the lacks of communication in between the child and the, uh, and the teacher. And the communication in the sense, I say that, uh, as you mentioned, uh, with the teacher writing in the, writing in the board, the child may not be able to read. So what are, the, uh, what are the systems, additional systems you need to give to the child? So that will always be there. You know, the, the itinerant teacher or the resource teacher will always travel. Uh, that, that challenges is always, always will be there. So uh, my, my, my advice to you is to, you know, train the teachers also. Try to train the teachers of the general system also or sensitize them also towards this line or towards what you are planning to so that that teachers will eventually turn into uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, resource teacher or uh, turn as a support to the uh, blind child. Do you agree with that? Yeah, t partially because to me, if I really have to travel, you said I may have to travel because I'm a resource teacher. What about the time of the children I'm wasting if I don't go there? They should be doing something because they have the mindset that, oh, it is only the resource teacher that comes before my notes can be made. Why don't you empower that child to make his own notes without your presence? That is what I am fighting for. Thank you. Jacqueline, excellent presentation. Thank you. As expected. Uh, there is one thing I want to change. Yeah. One thing I want to change, like in your slogan. When there is no barriers, how you will break? For you, I don't think there will be any barriers. You work strong, you can make it. Now, uh, what will be your role when you go back? doing advocacy to your government or to your education department? Yeah, my role first will be to go to the uh, special education division because I've worked with them for a long time and resource teachers are given the right to reproduce uh, teaching learning materials. But with my project, I need to get the right legislation for them. We need to contact the publication house that produces the school books to be able to get the digital formats 
and be, so that will be my first thing. I have to contact them to see my way forward. Yeah. Do you have any teachers training centers in uh, Ghana? Sure. We have about 16 teacher training colleges in Ghana. Will you be able to intervene in there to give early training for the teachers how to handle children with special needs? I've already been doing that because we have in-service training for newly trained teachers annually each year in my district. And I'm the special education officer in my office. So I do that. It's part of the training for newly trained teachers towards classroom teaching. Okay. You are a government uh, servant there. Yeah. Will the government allow you to start your own blind spark? That is um, a bit of a challenge. But when I get back home with my ideas, if it works out with them, they will let me go and they will support me. It is better than just living and I have, because I need to work with the school children, work with the training colleges, work with the university, and as well work with the resource teachers. So I need their support in all ways before this project can succeed. We wish you, like uh, your government should give, pull a new chair for you to start working on. All the best. Thank you. Just one more suggestion. Because I was just thinking about this mod. It would be excellent if all the blind sparks in different countries could come together to actually put together a module for, uh, you know, so-called normal teachers. You know? So that would be extremely helpful, I think. And if you actually put that together, it's possible for us to lobby with, say, for example, the Kerala government would lap it up probably. It would actually go down very well with several governments. Uh, I can tell you this off the cuff. So, you know, it would be wonderful if you, you can actually focus on a workable module that's re reproducible, of course, with particular kinds of adaptations across culture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Jacqueline, you also have uh, around a couple of four questions from Trina. Um, the first question she has for you is, the cultural differences between Ghana, Colombia, India, and other countries you're going to collaborate with for the book project is immense. Children live, behave, do very different things in these countries. Perceptions towards the blind, degree of alienation, all vary. How do you propose that these project leaders in these countries can work together to formulate a uniform manual for daily living for the blind? Is it clear? Thank you. To me, I believe the cultural differences doesn't really matter. When I came to Kantari, we talked about our experiences with blind people. And it, it's interesting that blind people suffer the same marginalization, social barriers as any, everybody in any part of the world. So for me, those experiences wouldn't change. What we want to do is get ways to empower those blind people that blind people can decide what they want to do with their lives. Your next question is to access the material in your resource libraries and use them independently. The blind children you're targeting will need a lot of motivation. If left unattended by a teacher, children intuitively play and do activities that are fun for them. How are you sure that the children will access and use your resource center well? The resource center basically is not going to be admitting the children there. It is where we are producing and training resource teachers. So it is the resource teachers, just as they go to the resource center or get the children into one classroom to do remedial teachings. This is when they are going to impact the usage of this system to the children. So to me, it's...